Welcome to the Payday with Ray Ray podcast, hosted by yours truly, Rachel Bell. I'm here to make your life easier as an entrepreneur and teach you everything I've learned about building multiple seven-figure online businesses. And on this podcast, I'll be giving you my best advice, trainings, and mindset shifts so you can grow your business and most importantly, make every day your payday. Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of Payday with Ray Ray. We have got a bunch of writer downer information in here, guys. So before you go any further in this podcast episode, you either want to make a decision between passively listening and then going back to take notes or just pausing right now and taking notes when you have time. Or if you're sitting at your desk and you're doing nothing better, then go ahead and grab your journal, grab your notebook, grab your notes app, whatever you take notes on and get down and dirty because we are going over so many different things that you're going to want to take note of including some copywriting formulas that you can immediately implement in your content and see instant results. So who loves instant results? Everybody. So we're going to get you some. Now I want to quickly go over our agenda, but before I do that, I just want to share a little bit about who's sponsoring this episode. And if you know anything about me at all, you'll know that it's Online Coach University. Yeah. So cool. So Online Coach University is, of course, my own business. It's my company. And inside of Online Coach University, we offer a variety of programs to help online coaches start, scale, and grow their online coaching businesses using the power of social media. Our signature program that is most popular for online coaches looking to start up and go full-time online is called Online Coach Accelerator. Take a shot for every time I say online coach. (laughs) Get used to it. This this show is about online coaching. So yes, Online Coach Accelerator is our signature 90-day business mentorship program that takes you through everything you need to know to start and scale your online coaching business, including niching, including offer creation and packaging your expertise into an irresistible offer. We include content creation. So if you like any of the information that I'm about to share, there is all of this information plus more. It's basically on steroids inside of the program OCA. We also teach you about sales and how to sell with confidence and authenticity. And of course, business management, productivity, all the other things that you need to fill the gaps, including that pesky mindset stuff that comes up all the time in our entrepreneurial roller coaster. So if you are interested, go and check it out and learn more about the program. And you can watch some badass testimonial videos, some case studies from real students who have gone through the program and achieved amazing results. And you can hear all about their candid experience of what they thought about the program at www.onlinecoachaccelerator.com. And when you're on that page, give it a little scan through and do your best to either apply or join the waitlist because every single round that we launch enrollment for OCA, we generally sell out of spots. So it's very competitive to get in, but don't worry if you are a perfect fit, we will prioritize you by looking at your application. And I'm also going to send you a bunch of valuable emails, stuff that never hits the podcast, never hits my Instagram if you sign up for the waitlist anyway. So you have nothing to lose. If you're interested, go to www.onlinecoachaccelerator.com sign up for the waitlist and I will talk to you there. Okay, so let's dive into our agenda for this episode. It is all about copywriting. And if you know anything about what I stand for in terms of what works in online business, let me just make it super clear. I stand for not tactics, not hashtag strategies, not little things that come and go with the wind and are so dependent on like a stupid algorithm. I believe in immutable marketing laws and principles, things that stand the test of time and allow you to use these tools, embody them, and weather any storm that comes about in business and in the economy. Because if you know what human behavior interacts with when it comes to advertising, marketing, and ultimately selling your offer, and you know how to utilize human behavior principles to make sure that your content resonates and converts, you're never going to have a problem. But the problem with a lot of the information that people share out there is just focused on the most shiny object. So here's a hashtag strategy that will raise your Instagram views by 200 impressions per week. Yes, those things can compound and they can be helpful, but if you are just starting your business or you're looking to take your content and your engagement, your community to the next level, you have to learn the principles. Without the principles, you're constantly chasing tactics and that means you never have a strategy. So in this episode, I'm going to break down a couple different things. We're going to talk about content 101 before we dive into copywriting as a more niche topic. And inside of content 101, I'm going to teach you how to write about the right things. No pun intended. (laughs) 
write about the right things, okay? So what should you be writing about? How do you know if what you're writing about is actually going to work? How do you know if it's what people want to hear or if you're just getting lost in the noise? We'll cover that. We're going to talk about copywriting, where it's originated from, and the core purpose of it, how to use it, how to understand it, and understand that copywriting is a science, not an art. Then we're going to go over the four commandments of copywriting, commandments that you shall never break, ever, and copywriting formulas. So this is when you're really going to want to get that pen writing really fast and you're going to want your thumbs to be going a million miles an hour to write down these copywriting formulas and use them immediately. We're also going to cover biggest mistakes to avoid because I don't want you to be making mistakes, not like I made them because I made a lot of them. I did some really stupid things when I was first starting because I just didn't know what I was doing wrong, but I'll distill all of my lessons into a list of mistakes that you can avoid. And then at the end of this episode, I'm giving you guys a bonus. It's free. It's wonderful. It's actually a live content audit that I did for someone as a giveaway on my Instagram a few months ago. And basically on that audit, I took someone's post and I completely rewrote it and taught them in about an hour or two hours how to completely rewrite any caption to make it 10 times more compelling, profitable, converting, all the good things that we want our content to do. So it's if you want to see me like coaching live and actually writing a caption for someone that I get on a call with, that's going to be a goodie. So I'll tell you where you can access that, how you can access that at the end of the episode. Okay, so enough blibber blabber from me. Let's dive into the actual topic at hand, content. Now, when we're talking about content creation, a lot of coaches will start off their day a little bit something like this. They'll wake up, they'll stretch, they'll drink their morning celery juice and go for a long walk as the birds chirp overhead. They'll feel the sunshine raining down on their shoulders because they just worked out and did some push-ups because hashtag Fitspo and they've got their whole life perfect and then they do something that is totally not perfect, but they don't know it. They open up their phone. They go to write a piece of content for Instagram and they ask themselves this deadly question. What do I want to talk about today? What's present for me right now? What am I interested in? What do I want to share? What is about me? I, I, me, me, me. What do I want to say? Now, I love you. You're awesome. You have amazing things to say. But please, when it comes to creating content that's meant to convert, never start with what you want to share. Instead, you should know everything about what your ideal client avatar needs to hear and write content specifically about that. So if you're asking yourself, what do I want to share? What's relevant for me? What am I doing today that I could share? Yes, lifestyle content can be helpful, but if you're writing content to convert, understand that it always needs to be about your ideal client avatar, not about you. So the one-on-one rule there is that your content is never about you. Your business is never about you. Yes, it's you're a personal brand, so you're the one representing it, but don't get distracted by thinking that the business is actually about you. It's not your show. It's your vehicle to distribute awareness around what you have to sell. So remember, your content is not about you. It's about how you can help your ideal client avatar. So what does that mean? It means that you need to get inside your ideal client's inner dialogue and understand what is really paining them right now. What are their desires? What are their goals? What are their dreams? What are their internal belief systems and values look like? And how can you create content that adds value to their life every single day? And once you know the answer to this and you actually know your ideal client avatar well enough, this becomes such an easy gateway to walk through. And you will never experience writer's block ever again, because you can just have a laundry list of topics to go through and recycle through and say, oh yeah, my ideal client wants to know how to eat foods that support their digestion. Or, oh yeah, my ideal client wants to learn how to get clients without DMing people. Or, oh yeah, my ideal client avatar wants to know how they can up-level their mindset and get over these constant triggers that they're dealing with. So, You need to do some research if you haven't already and do some interviews with people that you can learn from in terms of your ideal client avatars. Get inside their brains, understand what they're thinking about, what they really want to hear, understand their fears, pains, and goals, and you will be set to go in terms of topics. So that's what I have to say in terms of what to write about. And as long as you are focused on your ideal client avatars experience and tying in your expertise, your perspective, and your tools and your blueprints to how you can help them, you'll be set to go. 
but that's a key mindset shift. I don't want you to make the mistake of waking up, doing your perfect morning routine, and then writing a post and asking yourself, what do I want to share today? Because that's, it's not about you. The business is about your client always. Okay. So the most successful educators, before we go any further into copywriting and how to write copy so that it compels people to take an action, what you ultimately need to understand more than anything else is that no one will read your shit if you're boring. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. We had the best textbooks in school, didn't we? Oh yeah, nobody remembers because they were boring, right? So it's a mind fuck, right? Like you may not think that you're that interesting. You may not think that you have that much humor to share, or you may think that you don't know how to infuse personality into your advertising. But let me tell you that the more polarizing you can be, the more you can let your freak flag fly, the more that you can be yourself, like the person that you are around your closest friends or your boyfriend or your husband or your wife or whatever, whoever you're closest to, you know that you're weird around them, right? Like everyone's kind of weird unless it's just me, but I think that everyone's actually secretly weird and we hide that part of ourselves, even though that's what makes people feel closest to us because we want to be authentic. So if you are afraid of polarizing, you're never going to win at advertising. You need to be able to understand that there are people who are going to be wildly attracted to you because you're yourself, and there will be people who are wildly repulsed from you because you are yourself. You can't have one without the other. You can't just say, oh, I just want people to resonate with me without also taking on the people who absolutely disagree and would never buy your product. You have to have a capacity for rejection in advertising. And the people who generated some of the world's most iconic campaigns like Got Milk and things of that nature, they understood that advertising is a game and an art of getting rejected. And you have to deal with so much rejection when you are advertising and that is a good thing. So instead of trying to watch your mouth and walk on eggshells and try not to say the wrong thing, you should really be focusing on how you can provide value and ultimately provide entertainment so that people continue to tuning into your stuff. So ideally, you wouldn't make your online presence as chaotic as like someone watching a car accident, like they can't look away. We're not aiming for that. We are aiming for you to be yourself and for people to see themselves in you and therefore listen to you. No matter how good your formula is, no matter how good your copy is, if you are boring and you're trying to sell something that's exciting, it's not going to work. But if you're copywriting to provide more of a logical solution, then make your copy reflect that tone, that voice, and that brand. Okay, so now let's talk about copy. What is it? How can we use it? How do we do it? So let's define copywriting real quick. The copywriting is, just so we're all on the same page, using direct response copywriting is a way to sell anything to anyone, <laughs> to put it very simply. Copywriting is the act of writing content so that the reader feels compelled to take an action or make a shift of some kind. Now, copywriting is basically a tool that we can use to get to the goal of influencing the reader to buy, click, swipe, subscribe, whatever we want them to do. So in marketing, when we say copy, it's how we refer to the written word. So this could look like your captions. It could look like your sales pages, your um, PDFs that you send out, posts, um, long form content, short term content. And also what you can apply these copywriting principles to is anytime you show up on video. Understand that anything that's written, if it's compelling in writing, it would be compelling on video. So if you can learn how to use these formulas and learn the science and apply it to what you do on video and what you do in everything that you do, it will be like pouring gasoline on the fire, which is what we want. So even if you plan on doing videos like Instagram stories, or YouTube or live streams or something like that, the fact is that you have to master your communication skills and on sales calls and on coaching calls. So this is a worthwhile use of your time to learn how to master these essential communication skills. So writing intentionally is the best way to train yourself to constantly advertise because your words matter. Whether you believe it or not, your words matter. And I'm sure that we all have goals with our communication, like we want to stop using filler words and saying, um, so much and all of that stuff and learn how to articulate our thoughts much more clearly and communicate with power and clarity. So how are you going to get there if you're not already there? Practice. Grasshopper, practice. 
We're all learning how to communicate more effectively, and copywriting, in my opinion, is the best tool we can use to regularly tune into the skill set and grow that muscle. So if you, even if you don't advertise, please start direct response copywriting for funsies because it will pay off in the, in the long term big time. Now, with direct response copywriting, I want to attribute credit to the person who coined this term, who is David Ogilvie. And he's also known as the father of modern advertising. So he coined the term direct response and he headed up really, really successful and memorable campaigns for companies like American Express, Rolls Royce, Hathaway, Shell, Dove. He did it all. So the thing about David Ogilvy was that he knew that the most effective direct response copywriting doesn't just talk to the customers. It doesn't just talk to them and say, oh, this is what you want. Da, da, da. He speaks to them on a personal level. And that's really the difference here between just general advertising and direct response advertising. It's more personal and it inspires action, so not just awareness. So he had major beef with the general advertising campaigns that were going on at the time and that still go on like billboard style. Think, Have you ever driven down like a, a long road and seen billboards and you wonder to yourself, <laughs> First of all, how much does that cost to put a billboard up there? And what's really happening on this billboard? Am I clear about what they're offering? What am I supposed to do as a result of seeing this billboard? And am I ever going to think about this billboard outside of this car ever again? The answer was, it depends on the person, but generally, no. He had beef with this general advertising strategy because he believes it's a waste of money and that direct response is the future. And he's totally right. Direct response is what we're seeing convert really, really well time after time after time after time, especially when we're talking about social media platforms when you're a personal brand. In my opinion, if you're a personal brand and you represent your business and you're trying to sell through your personal brand, dude, direct response copywriting needs to be the way that you are conveying yourself and your service. So let me go ahead and dive in to the four commandments of direct response so that you're super clear on what the rules of the game are and what you need to remember at the forefront whenever you go to sit down and write a post. So I'm going to cover the theory first, and then we are going to dive into the actual formulas that you can implement immediately in your business. All righty, you ready for this? It's the four commandments of direct response. Commandment number one, your role is to sell. Don't let anything distract you from the sole purpose of advertising. So a little bit of context on this commandment. And again, I'll repeat it. Your role is to sell. Do not let anything distract you from the sole purpose of advertising. Okay. Talking all you influencers out there and want to be influencers, <laughs> you know, talking about, you know, where you got your latest outfit from. Don't let anything distract you from the sole purpose of advertising what you actually want to sell. So the goal of creating ads and ad copy is not to prove who's more clever or witty or creative. So a lot, a large amount of people will say, oh, I need to be inspired. I need to feel creative in order to write content. And while I used to be one of those people, I was the worst offender of this belief system at play. And I could only write content or even get started writing content if my candles were lit and if my incense was burning and if my water was right next to me and I have a little chai tea latte and all that stuff. Setting the mood is great, but don't let it distract you into thinking that you need to be clever or witty or original in order to create content that sells. It's not true. So content that sells is not about being clever or witty. And I always say to my students, I always say to everyone, clarity over cleverness, always. And it's not actually to prove who can come up with the most, you know, witty phrase or the best play on words or the best acronyms or whatever. And this comes from David Ogilvy's book, when he stated that he hates when his employees refer to themselves as creative. He's like, I don't need creative people. I need people who can follow the formulas and people who can get out of their own way and set their ego aside and just write. He also says, and this is a quote from David Ogilvy himself, he says, when I write an advertisement, I don't want you to tell me that you find it creative. I want you to find it so interesting that you buy the product. <laughs> and this is so true. Like, you do not want to be the most creative person. You want to be the most profitable business owner, right? And yes, creativity, my friends, and profit can also coexist and Again, tying back to commandment number one, your role is to sell as a business owner. So don't let anything distract you from the sole purpose of advertising. Commandment number two is this. Clearly define your positioning. What 
and for who. So context on this is knowing exactly who you are talking to in your positioning, in your advertising, so that you know where you stand and who you're talking to and who you are ignoring. So for example, Dove could have positioned their soap for men with dirty hands, right? (laughs) They could have been like, all right, do you have dirty hands because you've been working all day? Dove soap. But instead, they decided to go after their ideal customers, which are women. They wanted a more feminine spin on their soap brand. And they would have been just like every other soap brand out there if they had gone for just dirty hands. But what makes them diverse and distinguished is how well they speak to their ideal customers, which are women. So they'll put on campaigns to promote uh, real beauty and things like that. And it's been going viral for years now. Dove's advertisements and their campaigns to spread awareness around beauty and things of that nature have just absolutely gone bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. So positioning is woven into your tone, your topics of conversation, it's woven into your visuals, etc. So we'll go further into detail into this in a moment and in the formulas, and I'll show you how that kind of works. But just know that your copy is going to be how you primarily communicate your positioning. So positioning is going to be huge in how you stand out among the crowd because you can look sideways and you can look under a rock and you're going to find an online coach. (laughs) You walk outside your house and everyone is an online coach. Yes, that dog barking at you is an online coach. That woman walking her baby in a stroller is an online coach. That man driving his Range Rover past you is an online coach. Like everyone's an online coach, but your job is to stand out among the crowd and let people see how you're different and distinguished just like Dove did with their positioning. So again, Commandment number two is clearly define your positioning, what and for who. The third commandment of direct response advertising is this, and it's simple and it's going to be so relieving. Commandment number three is this, talk to them in a language they use every day. So this is not about being the smartest or using the most extensive vocabulary, trying to prove your wits through adding, you know, a 12th grade reader's level. That's not even a good example, like a college reader's level. (laughs) Like you're not trying to write a letter to your grandpa, you're trying to write content that sells. So talk to your audience in the same way that you would talk to a close friend that's sitting in a chair in front of you. And a couple quotes from David Ogilvy in his book is, don't address your readers as though they were gathered together in a stadium. When people read your copy, they are alone. So pretend that you're writing to each of them a letter on behalf of your client. And this is if you're writing for someone else. But for you, this would be just like, act like you're writing them a personalized letter and you are so close to them and you're just giving them some insight and you're giving them perspective and you're acting like they are right in front of you and you're just writing them a super candid letter. Another quote from David Ogilvy is this, it seems to me you should use their language, the language they use every day, the language in which they think. Now, this is really where we dive deeper into your client's internal dialogue. So if you do not know who your ideal client avatar is, you do not know what your niche is really thinking about every day, this is a huge opportunity for you to discover those things so that you can talk in the language in which they think. And the fourth and final commandment of direct response advertising is commandment number four. Write headlines and you'll have successfully invested 80% of your energy (laughs) or your money or whatever you are putting behind this copy. So a little fun fact for you is that eight out of 10 people only read the headline. That's right. Nobody gives a fuck about what you have to say. Actually, they will only get curious if your headline is dope and if it is capturing their attention and their focus. So really, on average, that just leaves two out of 10 people who stay and actually read the rest of the article or the post or the caption. And with these numbers, you have to ask yourself, do I really think that people can afford to waste their time reading something complicated or tricky that makes them think even more? Probably not. So people really need to be seduced into consuming your material. And the best way to go about this is to be clear rather than clever. And of course, make sure that your headlines are formulated in a way that speaks directly to what's on their mind so that they stop their scroll and they actually read your content. So another uh, quote from David Ogilvy is basically echoing what I just said. Never use tricky or irrelevant headlines. People read too fast to figure out what you are trying to say. And on average, five times as many people read the headline as they read the body copy. So when you have written your headline, you have spent 80 cents out of your dollar. Congratulations. The headline is really the only thing that can make a difference here. So again, 
what I love to think about when I'm talking about advertising or when I'm reading through a caption before I post it, I love to think to myself, would I stop and read this? Would this actually get my attention? Because if you think about your own social media content consuming habits, chances are hardly anything gets your attention these days. Maybe a TikTok video gets your attention because it's new or maybe it's viral or there's a kitten on it, whatever it is, something will get your attention. What is that thing and how can you infuse that into your headline? So another tool that I want to recommend to you guys is to make sure that your grade level in terms of the reading complexity of what your clients have to go through when they read your post, your readability grade level should be like under four or five. So you want to make sure that your content is extremely readable, which means that you're not using complex vocabulary. You're making everything really short, simple, sweet, concise, and to the point, really elegant. So a great way to kind of filter through your content and figure out how complex your sentence structure is and the words you're using are, go to HemingwayApp.com. That's H-E-M-I-N-G-W-A-Y app.com. I just made a little jingle for you so you can remember it. And go to that little website, post your content in there, and it will automatically spit out what grade level reading uh, level, I'm having a hard time saying that, what grade level readability it has. And it will allow you to see what the most complex parts of your content are so you can clean it up and make it way more clear so that people actually read it. So that's a little nugget for you, something that I use all the time before I send out an email or before I uh, post a sales page. I want to make sure that it's super simple and that it's easy to understand because people are going to be skimming it. I'm not going to joke myself into thinking that people actually give a fuck about every single sentence that I say. I know people skim. So that's just what we need to do with you as well. Now, let's dive into a couple of actual top converting sales formulas when it comes to copywriting. So I'm going to share three proven copywriting formulas that you can use in your content right now, literally today, if you want to get down, write some content, put it into this little formula. And I'm also going to give you some examples of how I would use these formulas in a real context. So now when I'm sharing these copywriting formulas, I want to remind you that although I'm just sharing three, there are hundreds or thousands and really limitless formulas that you can implement when it comes to direct response advertising and copywriting. And it's important not to get locked in to just a few formulas. I want you to do some research, Google copywriting formulas, look up direct response advertising. A great book on this is Ogilvy on advertising. It's my favorite book and it's written by, or it's a little compilation of all of David Ogilvy's work case studies, all that stuff. And it's best to learn from the experts on this stuff. So I can make it really simple for you, but ultimately, if you want to become a master of this stuff go to the source of who's teaching it and who knows how to master this stuff. So let's dive into the top converting three copywriting formulas, and I will explain them now. The first formula I want to introduce to you is called PADS, P-A-D-S, which stands for Problem Agitation Discredit solution. And then the second one is going to be ADA, A-I-D-A, which stands for attention, interest, desire, action. And then the final one that I want to dive into is P-P-P-P, P, which stands for picture, promise, prove, push. So you'll notice a pattern here. It's basically getting attention through either a problem or a catchy headline or a dream or a vision and then going deeper into it by hooking them with either agitation, interest, or a promise. And then you're going to reinforce what you are saying by either discrediting, adding more desire onto it, or proof. And then you offer them a solution, an action, or an invitation. So that is what we're going to dive into. Let's start with the PADS formula, P-A-D-S, Problem Agitation Discredit Solution. So in this formula, and when I am explaining this, the acronyms stand for the steps that you're going to take and what the topic of each step is. So with PADS, Problem Agitation Discredit Solution, what you're going to do is address a specific problem your ideal client is dealing with. This is the problem phase. And then with the agitation phase, what you want to do is agitate the discomfort by describing the pain points in detail, like going deeper into it, putting it into context and things like that. Now, when it comes to discrediting, you want to bring up possible solutions that your ideal client has already tried or considered, and you're going to 
discredit those solutions and explain why they don't work. So this positions you as a more reliable source and it lets them know that you understand them on a deeper level. Because a lot of people will say something like, lose weight while eating your favorite foods. And then you could also say, but I don't mean counting calories. A lot of people will say this stuff, but then they still put you on restrictive diets, da 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 da. And that's what doesn't work for me. So I have a different solution. And I'll give you more examples in just a moment. But finally, solution, the final piece of this is delivering the solution or the value. So this is when you actually dive into your content, the bulk of your content that you want to share and add value with. So you don't share the actual content of what you want to say until you get to the solution point, and then you just give it to them. But the whole foreplay, if you will, of this post is problem agitation and discrediting. So then you dive into your solution. So let's talk about an example of this. So let's say that I am crafting a post for a wellness or health coach, and I would start out with my problem. So I might make my headline something like, are you sick of eating any meal and immediately feeling bloated? So I just open up with a problem right there. And then I'm going to go into agitation and say, it's almost like no matter what you eat, you feel puffy and lethargic. And the worst part is you have no idea what the root cause is of this problem. So that's agitating the pain point even more. And then I'm going to discredit. So this is what that would look like. Most people resort to pills, probiotics, an elimination diet, or even stop eating altogether. But these methods are ineffective because X, Y, Z. I would just discredit these solutions, discredit the myths, discredit everything that the ideal client avatar has already tried or is considering trying. And then finally, I close it up and tie it up with a solution. And I would say something like this. Here's how I fix this issue with my clients. I use a three-step method called blah, 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 blah. And then you go into the actual body of your content and deliver the value there. But it would be problem, agitation, discredit, and solution. Now, let's dive into the ADA formula, A-I-D-A. This is attention, interest, desire, and action. So basically, the flow here is, number one, you want to catch the reader's attention with a bold headline, and then you're going to intrigue them to read more with fresh or unusual or counterintuitive information. And then when you're building desire, you want to emphasize their core desires. Like what do they really value? What do they really want? Um, Bring that into the light and really paint the picture for them. And then finally with action, you are going to finish off by asking them to take an action, whether that's clicking, swiping, subscribing, buying, whatever you want them to do, you insert it there. So in an example, this would look like this for the attention piece. Uh, You want to make a really bold headline that just grabs attention and triggers alarm and alertness. So an example of this would be the five deadly mistakes that ruin your sales calls. Boom. So if you've ever done a sales call, you're probably going to understand, yeah, this is important. Five deadly mistakes, don't want to make those. So then following along the ADA, A-I-D-A formula, the next piece of it is interest. So I might say something like this. You might think that your sales script is enough to get the close, but psych, there's five mysterious secrets that make clients hesitate, object, and reject your offer no matter how good it is. Okay, and then we're going to build desire real quick. Desire looks like this. If you want clients to say, yes, here's my credit card and sign on without any objections, keep reading. So you're just adding desire to what they truly want to happen. And then this is where you offer them an action. So an action step might look like this. Download my PDF cheat sheet on the five deadly mistakes in sales and how to fix them in my bio. Click the link and you'll get instant access to the PDF. So again, that's just a really flowy example of how you can grab attention, interest, desire, and action all in a very, very short post. Like sometimes you do not need to write a whole novel to explain your point. Sometimes just going line by line and making it very, very concise and clear and compelling is your best course of action. Now, finally, let's dive into the final copywriting formula of the day, which is PPPP stands for picture, promise, prove, push. So in the picture phase, you are going to create a vivid scene about an existing pain or a desired future outcome and just paint that picture up, put on your Bob Ross hat and just make those mistakes into birds. (laughs) 
<laughs> if you don't get my reference, I'm sorry. Uh, and then the next phase is promising. So promise phase looks like this. You're gonna go ahead and state how your solution will solve the pain or bring the desired outcome much closer to your ideal client avatar. And then in the prove section, this is important, you're going to back it up. So you're going to support your promise with results or testimonials, case studies, or data. Okay. And then with push, the final step, you just simply nudge or invite your reader to take an action. So again, this looks like clicking, swiping, subscribing, uh, doing whatever you want them to do in that phase. So an example of this would look like as follows. In the picture phase, opening up, I might write my headline like this. Remember, I'm just trying to paint a vivid picture of what my ideal client avatar actually wants. So I would say something like, what if you could make 10K per month, work from home, travel the world, and do what you love for a living? And then I would add a promise OCA has helped hundreds of coaches go full-time with their online careers, and here's why. And then up next is the prove phase. So in the prove phase, I would say something along the lines of testimonial or case study. So I'm going to use a real example here, Casey Tom. Shout out to you, Casey Tom, one of my favorite graduates that I've gotten the chance to mentor. I would say this in the prove section. Casey Tom, one of our graduates, was able to generate over $180,000 in one year from using the OCA method after being more than $80,000 in debt. And then finally, we go into the push phase. To see if OCA is the perfect fit for your business, send me a direct message with the word ready, and I'll send over all the details. Boom. Picture, promise, prove, push. That is the PPPP. And that is all you need to know to create amazing content this week with these three copywriting formulas. And of course, you can just rinse and repeat and make sure that every single post hits on these and you would be doing an amazing job at your content. You would 10X your results with just this direct response copywriting formulas. And of course, there's hundreds more. So do some research, check it out, get creative. Now, before I dive into the bonus that I want to give you, this live content audit workshop that I did, where I restructure an entire caption and rewrite it to make it 10 times more compelling and influential, I want to dive into the biggest copywriting mistakes that I see so that you are fully equipped to get out there, start writing, sharing your voice without making a couple of deadly mistakes. The first mistake that I see most commonly made in copywriting is that they don't have a clear point or the reason the point isn't clear in the post is that there's too many points. So if you ever are writing a piece of content and you find yourself kind of getting lost in what you're saying and you're not sure how to tie all the points together and you're like, ah, I just don't know how to make this all flow, it's very, very likely that you're talking about too many concepts in one post. So you need to make sure that you're not overloading your content. You need to make sure that you're just explaining or producing one clear thought at a time and make sure that your point is very clear. Another huge mistake is that you're not catching attention in the headline or your headlines are weak and they're just asking vague questions rather than pointed, specific questions that directly relate to your ideal client avatar. Another mistake is that you are being too safe, too safe. So there's no firm positioning. There's no taking a stand for anything. There's no polarization. And because of that, you look like a textbook and nobody listens to you because you're boring. So don't play it safe. Play it fun. Another big copywriting mistake is if you're being too relevant to your family, your friends, and your peers, not your ideal client avatars. This is a horrible sin that I see being committed by almost everyone. When they're just starting out, they want to appeal more to their family and friends and peers than their ideal client avatars. So they end up softening everything that they're saying or changing the way that they approach their content and not you know, positioning themselves as the authority that they are because they want to be relevant to their family and friends, not their ideal client avatar. So remember, when you're writing content, you're writing it for your ideal client avatar. Forget everyone else. Another big mistake is that the copy is way too dense and it doesn't continually intrigue. So if you're just writing like like text blocks and like a whole novel and you're trying to post that on Instagram without breaking it up into digestible little chunks and spacing it out and making sure that it's one clear thought at a time, you're probably going to lose a lot of readers and nobody's going to read through your content completely because think about it, we need to write all of our content for the skimmers, especially on social media. Now, when it comes to long form content like PDFs or videos or actual material like articles, 
then you can actually text block and go deeper into your thoughts. But remember that on social media, you're dealing with a lot of skimmers. So make sure that you can get your point across as skillfully and as completely as you can while still appealing to the instant gratification brain that we are all turning on right now more than ever. Another huge mistake is that you're being too obsessed with creativity, originality, or being clever. And if I haven't made this clear enough already, I'll just say it again. Clarity over cleverness every single time it wins. So you're not going to, my creatives out there, my little artistes out there are not going to like this because they're like, no, but I have such a beautiful imagination and I can make it pretty and I can make it poetic. But let me just tell you, girl or guy, the poetic you know, cleverness and the wittiness and the imagination uh, is great to sprinkle on top, but do not make that the bulk of what you're trying to do in order to sell. And then finally, there's no logical theme with the content topics. So a big copywriting mistake is when you're talking about everything under a very broad spectrum of topics and it damages your top of mind awareness. So if you're talking about candles and your favorite soap and but you're also like a relationship coach and you're talking about your dog and you're talking about your health and you're talking about all this different stuff that has nothing to do with your actual niche and it's overkill and you're talking about all different types of things because you're quote unquote multi-passionate i mean all the power to you for having so many interests but please filter what's relevant to your ideal client avatar and what's not going to be relevant to them so that you don't lose their attention and lose their trust You want people to immediately think about your niche and then think about your face two seconds after that happens. So if someone says, hey, who's the best at Instagram growth and you're an Instagram growth consultant, you want people to immediately think about you. And the only way that's going to happen is if you continuously talk about it all the time. A crazy thing will start happening where people who have never even worked with you will start recommending you to other people for services because you're just the first person that comes to mind, right? And then finally, the last and most critical copywriting mistake is that you don't end with a call to action. Now, a call to action does not need to happen on every single post you ever make, but it should definitely be on most of them. You need to train your audience to engage, to be part of your community, and ultimately to take actions when you ask them to take actions. So make sure that your call to actions are there. Okay. That covers our training section. Now I want to give you access to the bonus content audit workshop that I hosted and I want to give you access to the free recording of that and you can get it right on my website by going to www.paydaywithrayray.com. It should be posted right there at the front and you'll be able to opt in, just put in your email address. You can unsubscribe anytime if you don't want my emails, but they're pretty good, I'm just saying. And you'll get that workshop delivered straight to your inbox with a little bow on top. So it'll be great, it'll be great for you, it'll be great for me, and we can talk and we can connect on email, that would be fun. And of course, you can dive into watching me actually construct a caption from scratch, auditing, and going through to make it 10 times more compelling and influential. Okay, if this episode was helpful, let your girl know, post it on the gram, do the thing, and have a good day. I am exhausted, so I'm gonna go to bed. Okay, thank you guys. Have a great Friday. Happy payday, and I'll see you next time on Payday with Ray Ray. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did find it super valuable, you just want to share it with the world. Make sure you screenshot, post and tag me on Instagram so I can stalk your profile and we can connect more. And to get notified on the next episode here on Payday, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes so you never miss a beat. Get out there, secure the bag, and I will see you next Payday.